Hello and welcome to a special big race betting preview in association with BetSafe. We are looking forward to the 2020 running of the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It promises to be one of the greatest flat races of the entire season. We've assembled a brains trust to pick through it for you. We've got Declan Ricks from the At The Races website. Simon Rowlands, the numbers guru, is on board as well. And we're going to look in real detail at the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. Is enable able to make history there is a growing confidence that she might be actually she's muscled her way back to the front of the market but what do our experts think find out whether it's a yay or nay for her not a lot of love for love by contrast and she's gone very very cold in the market in the last few days is that right or is it wrong we'll put that to the boys and get their view on that not a two horse race though Stradivarius has been all the rage in the build up to the big race dropping back in trip of course Stradivarius but there are French horses in the race too we should shouldn't forget Jean-Claude Rouget hasn't forgotten he says that Sotsas is a big player and he's getting increasingly bullish about the mighty Sotsas has got some really high quality French form uh, to his name as well there are other horses in the race as well but one of our experts will find out who shortly one of our experts thinks that Andre Fab needs his bumps felt about his horse running in the big race so we'll get you that we'll find out who are the best bets talk about tactics we'll talk about the draw and we'll give you some big juicy prices to get stuck into later on in the program as well this is the pre de the triomphe Big race betting preview with BetSafe. Yes, welcome to this big race betting preview. We're looking at the Arc de Triomphe, one of the greatest races of the season, and one of the best runnings of it for years and years, many people think. Let's introduce our panellists. Simon Rowlands joins us from the At The Races website, and his colleague Declan Ricks, also from the At The Races website, is with us as well. Welcome both. Uh, just in recent days, Simon, we've seen Enable uh, overtake Love at the head of the market. Is that right? Are they now the right way around or not? I believe so, Sean. Um, I think it's an overdue adjustment, really, that all along enables claims have been stronger than loves. Um, but it's taken quite a bit of rain in the Paris region for uh, other people to see it quite the same way. But uh, I think they're the right way round now. Where, where do you stand on that, Declan? Because, you know, the rain has come and people, many people feel that might be against a fluent, moving filly like love. But it's not exactly up in Abel's... I know she's gone on soft ground, but... Many people pointed the finger at the soft ground last year. What do you, what do you make of the way round they are now? I, I think that that's the correct way, Sean. To be honest, uh, in terms of just raw form, anyway, I, I've always felt the Naval should be anti-post favourite for this race, regardless of uh, of um, the ground. But now the ground has come up. You know, it looks like it's going to be very testing. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind it, it, it strengthens Able, Enable's chance of winning uh, considerably. And, and you know, it's, it, it's, it's bad news for Love and her fans, basically. That's, that's just the way, the way it is. Well, that's very, very interesting because, uh, you know, she's a three-year-old filly. She gets all the allowances, Simon, of three-year-old fillies. We've seen three-year-old fillies perform very, very powerfully in the race in recent years. And she's been winning classics for fun this year, not just winning, but absolutely thumping classic fields. Love, what, what does she need to do uh, to, be, to, to be considered uh, the equal of Enable on these terms? Couldn't have done more. Well, I think she needs to do a little bit more than uh, beating some of the horses she has in her races so far. Ines Timon was runner-up in the Oaks and um, hasn't done an awful lot for the form, including in Lister races since. Cloak of Spirits was runner-up in the Guineas. Finally won a listed race the other day, has been beaten several times since. I'm not convinced that the Yorkshire Oaks was really top draw, although winning by five lengths from Alpinista was a pretty good performance. But uh, in Enable, she's up against one of the best Phillies mares of all time at her very best, and certainly one of the um, best horses of uh, recent years. So... I think Love needs to do more than beating up second raters. <laughs> beating up second raters. Winning classics by wide margins. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that pans out come Sunday. One man who knows Enable uh, better than all of us, of course, is John Gosden, the trainer. Let's hear his view on Enable's chances. I've made the analogy of the old boxer, the old champion boxer coming back and they're getting older. The metabolism's changed. Oh. I'm on the runs, I'm back in the gym. It's hard, it's hard. She's always up for it, she's mentally strong, but she found it difficult to get to race fitness. The Eclipse put her right, and it put her right for the King George. And, she, you know, she ran a great race, and she won her third King George. It was a strange race. You know, we wound up with seven entries, six of Aidens and her. And we wound up taking on two of Aidens, and it was strange, 
in a sense, but there was a solid pace and a solid time. It wasn't run in a French bicycle race style, in the velodrome, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and to that extent, she, she put up a great performance. And to win a third King George has sort of made this whole year very worthwhile. So, but there's no doubt that as a six-year-old, nothing comes as easily to as it did. And I would probably have to say, as a three-year-old, I discussed it, what she was, how she could take on the world. And again, as a five-year-old, as a very mature, but a bit like a boxer who, who fights with this, as much as they do with speed, because some of the speed starts to just disappear to what it, they have when they're younger. And, and I suppose to that extent, she's very much the, the old pro now going into this arc. Interesting analogies there from John Gosden, the old pro, the, the veteran uh, boxer fighting with her brain as much as with brawn in Abel. She is now favourite. These are the, the bet safe odds currently. Obviously, these are subject to change. We're recording well in advance of the big race, but that's the way that the trend has been in the market in Abel uh, favoured over Love. Stradivarius has been a massive mover. What do you make of that uh, Stradivarius market move that we've seen in recent days, Declan? Because this was a big double figure price uh, not that long ago, and it seems that the rain came. Everyone thought, well, he stays, uh, therefore he'll win, but he's, he's not an obvious soft ground horse. No, he's not, Sean. He's, um, his whole career, we've been told that he's a, he's a fast ground horse and even how he moves um, and, and you know, just how he does vi everything visually on, on quicker ground, you know, uh, he, he definitely wants the ground quicker. Uh, as you saw when he ran in the, uh, the arc trial a couple of weeks back, that was, that was pretty quick ground and he, um, it was a bit of a farce of a race, but he went through it well. You know, I, I think the market now has has really kind of gone overboard with, with Stradivarius here. You know, he's fundamentally, he, he is a stayer. I'm, uh, I'm not saying he can't run well, but, you know, the, he, he's got, I think he's probably more a 12s or a 14s chance, really, over uh, over the 12 furlong trip. So, look, there, there's one thing he does have in, in his favour, and he's, cons he's consistent and he's tough. And he always turns up. So, you know, I'm sure when it, when, when it gets down to the nitty gritty in the last couple of furlongs, you know, he is one horse that you would like on your side. But, you know, he's, his rating is fundamentally uh, a staying rating and he's running in a middle distance race on ground that we've been told time and time again doesn't suit him. So um, for me, uh, I, just, I just could not back him now at the price. It's not a chance. Just on that middle distance angle, Simon, with regards to Stradivarius, because I, I know you're, you're very much a, a, a student of sectional times and, and so on, and many people will point to what, what Stradivarius has done in his races and said he, he, he knocks out 11 second, second furlongs for fun, this horse. He's, he's clearly got enough speed to be effective over a mile and a half. He's knocked out 11 second furlongs against stairs, and he knocked in 11 second furlongs uh, in the pre foy the other day, but it wasn't good enough to see him beat Anthony Van Dyke, quite. Um, I think, I thought that was a pretty good art trial by Stradivarius, uh, but rather like Declan, I can really only see him maybe finishing third or fourth or something like that. I don't think, I think one of the reasons why he's been so dominant amongst the stayers is that there hasn't been a really good one to take him on, and it's a much deeper pool of horses he's up against in a race like the Ark, and um, he's really, he's got his work cut out, but I'd expect him, being Stradivarius, he'll run well. Yeah, well, the market certainly is anticipating that he will. We'll look at the four in a moment. Let's talk about Love, though, because I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, uh, Simon and Declan, but you've both basically said Love can't possibly win, even if she starts running now, is pretty much what you've said. Um, I disagree, fundamentally. I think, she's, I think she was the right favourite, actually, Love, I must say, and, and I'm, I'm quite surprised that the, the market has reacted quite so negatively just on the basis of the, the ground. She may uh, cope just as, as well as enable on the on the ground, for all we know. Aidan O'Brien is the man who trains Love, not his only representative in the race, but let's hear uh, from Aidan O'Brien on Love. Obviously, she's a Guineas winner, which makes her very different, I suppose, to most mile and a half horses. When you have the class to win a Guineas and, and you get a mile and a half the way she does, it just makes them very unusual. Um, and like you said, she was a Group 1 winning two-year-old, and and she's only three now. Um, I think found one the arc when she was four, I think, you know, so uh, uh, she's a, a very, very uh, exceptional filly, really. And would you find with the arc that that mile and a half, given that they get the soft ground, they tend to go a fair gallop, they certainly did last year. Is it a real test, more of a test than a lot of the three-year-old races that she's been in? I think it is, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, a mile and a half in soft ground in the arc is tough going. Um, and like obviously we, we wouldn't, uh, 
we wouldn't think soft ground would be ideal. In an ideal world, we would like nice ground for her. Um, she's out of a pivotal mare, so usually most pivotals do handle a dig, but in an ideal world, we would like nice ground for her because she's a beautiful action filly and, and, and uh, has plenty of class. To win it sure would be unbelievable, but um, and, uh, sure, it's, it's, they're always tough and they're always competitive, and, and we don't ever expect anything else. And obviously, we would be delighted for everybody. We'll come back to Aidan O'Brien's other runners, but let's stick with love for the moment. I suppose, Declan, in fairness there, you know, Aidan O'Brien said it, didn't he? Ideally, we'd want better ground for her, but, it, you know, it's going to be the same for all of them, and, and love's still, still meeting Enable on those same terms, which I keep coming back to, getting all those allowances. Yeah, yeah, look, exactly. And, and, and the way the ground has gone now, Sean, you know, horses getting weight for... Um, you know, that carrying that less weight on this kind of ground, especially if it's a strongly run race, you know, that probably is a, a small a small uh, factor to them. But look, fundamentally, there's two things with love. Twice last year as a juvenile, she was beaten um, at the end of in, in her last, she was beaten twice in her last three runs in the debutant stakes and in the Phillies mile, both, time, both times on ground uh, that, that had juice in it. Uh, the second thing with her is she is such an elegant mover. She really does glide across the ground. Um, and, you know, I know Aidan has mentioned there she's out of a, a pivotal mare. But, you know, in some ways now that, you know, pedigree goes out the window because we've got enough evidence on the form book and in how she moves. Um, and I, to be honest now, I think Aidan, you know, with the, uh, he's, it sounds to me like he's very worried um, about the ground, and I'm not going to say he's clutching at, stall, at straws, mentioning pivotal there, but I, I, ju I just, I just can't see it, Sean. I, I really can't. Um, you know, the, in the form book, it says she's not as good on soft ground, and the way she moves, you know, this is a filly who would probably wing around Santa Anita, to be honest. I think, you know, she'd have no problem with that kind of firm ground. So, um, at the prices, I'm, I'm, I'm very much willing to take her on. OK. At the prices, here's a question for you. If I offered you two to one enable, two to one love, two to one the field, you, you, and you have to choose one of those at that price, what, where, where would your bet go, Declan? Oh, enable all day. Not Simon, even same, same, same question for, for you, Simon. You can have two to one each of three. The field, enable or love? I'm going to say enable, but I am tempted by the field. Um, Narrowing it down amongst the outsiders is is really difficult, but I do think that um, neither of the front two is invincible. OK, OK, not invincible, but both going for enable. I, I'd be with the field at those terms, I have to say. We're going to come back to the field because there are a lot of live runners in this race beyond the front two, but let's just stay on the, the two big fillies for, for just a moment longer. Enable, we heard from John Gosden, Simon, that she's she's... It's taken her longer to find her peak uh, sort of form and fitness this season. In terms of what she's been doing, we're just looking at the King George here. Where, where do you stand? Has, has she reached her, her former heights yet or not? It's difficult to be sure. Um, in terms of form, she hasn't needed to. But um, John Gosden is quite right to say that the, the times have been pretty good. The sectionals have been good. I think um, there's every reason to think she's as good as, if not as she was when she was absolutely supreme as a three-year-old, certainly as good as she has been as a four-year-old and a five-year-old. Um, it's not her fault the opposition against her has um, not been able to test her, but the clock has underlined that she's probably in really good form. Yep does indeed and uh, we will see how, how she fares very soon don't forget you can have your say as well we've heard from Simon and we've heard from Declan they're both with enable and more with love we're going to come to the field in a moment but you can uh, join in the conversation if you're watching this on YouTube join in the conversation uh, below the uh, the video there and post your comments there hit subscribe as well if you want to stay up to date with everything that at the races has to offer and Sky Sports Racing you get all of our content all the latest videos and shows and previews and all that sort of stuff and latest news as well uh, by hitting subscribe so do join us that way. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned, but you can join in that conversation as well. Let's turn our attention to other races. We've mentioned there, there are other horses in there. There are other horses trained by Aidan O'Brien in here as well. Um, and actually, actually, rather than me tell you, let's hear from Aidan O'Brien because he, in this little VT I'm going to show you, he, show, he talks about his other um, chances in the race, uh, Mogul, Serpentine in Japan. Have a listen to this. 
I suppose Mogul was very impressive the last day, so you, and that was in a trial for the arc, so I don't think you could have been more impressive. Uh, Serpentine ran a great race in the same trial, so you'd have to be very happy with that. And uh, Japan was the one who was a little bit disappointing to everybody's eye in Leperstown, but when we took the race apart and looked at it, we weren't as disappointed as everybody else, and we think he will leave that run well behind him. And he did a very good run in Longchamp last year in the arc, and, and he won the a Grand Prix de Paris in Longchamp as well, so Longchamp is going to suit him. Yeah, Japan, previous winner of the Grand Prix de Paris, but it was Mogul who won it this year. And uh, I've, I've been watching this again and again uh, the last couple of days, Simon. And the more I watch it, the more I like this. I quite like Mogul going into this race. I also like the German derby winner, Innsbruck, who, who finishes very well to come second. But Mogul has all the gears to take care of this field. This was a good field. I like this trial. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, I can't say that I'm particularly warm to Mogul um, prior to this, but yes, it looked good. Um, Serpentine uh, just kind of got a little bit stuck between two stools for me. He neither went forward and tried to do what he did in the derby, which I think would have been really interesting. But he ended up um, being picked off by horses coming from further back, including Mogul and uh, the second and, uh, and third. And I think that Serpentine would be capable of quite a bit better uh, ridden slightly differently. But yeah, on the day, Mogul was um, finally delivered on some of the reputation he's long had. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, he's a pretty big gross horse, so maybe it just has taken that long for him to find uh, his full fitness, Mogul. Innsroop finished very well as, as well. Although, interestingly, Innsroop's now a shorter price than Mogul, funnily enough, for the Arc de Triomphe, with most firms uh, do shop around. So I think Mogul's quite interesting at those prices. What did you make of that trial, Declan? And also, um, you know, Aidan O'Brien's other potential runner, I suppose, Japan in the race. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was an OK trial, Sean. I, I don't think the form is kind of up to winning an arc, to be honest. Uh, I thought Mogul on the day was uh, was trained trained and ridden beautifully by uh, Aidan O'Brien and Pierre Charles Boudot. Uh, to me, that day, he just he looked on it, that this was the day. And, and he's had a bit of a, an issue with kind of putting runs together. So whether he can do it again on the arc on, on vastly different ground, I'm not sure. I would say as well, you know, they, they went a nice pace for him that day. Uh, Pierre Charles Boudot gave him a fantastic ride. He, he cut paint the whole way around. And the rate, you know, the rate in the straight had opened up like the Red Sea for him. I don't know. I, I think that I can see in swoop your, your fancy reversing form with him on the ground. But uh, fundamentally, I, I, I just think these horses still have the bones of, of 10 pounds to find with with the navel at her peak. And, um, you know, I, I just I can see them running well. I can see in swoop running well on the ground, but I just. It'd be a huge shock for me to see him uh, to win the arc, to be honest. I think a lot's going to have to go wrong with Enable um, for, for a horse like him to, to win the earth. But he's got an each-way chance, but that, that's about it for me. Interesting. He did get a lovely split, it's true, Pierre Charles and Mogul in that trial. You might have, so when the cutaway came into the straight and, and off he shot. What about Japan? Have we forgotten about him, Declan? Yeah, look, um, if, if the viewers actually watched the, the, the ledger preview we did a, a couple of weeks ago, we kind of had a similar... We were chatting similarly about Mogul, and we said that day that, you know, Aidan O'Brien... Wasn't um, wasn't giving up on Mogul, and then he popped up, and I think at about 15 to two, and absolutely bolted up in the in the Grand Prix de Paris. Um, I, I've been very taken from Aidan's comments about this horse on the lead up um, to the race. He's he's still not giving up on Japan, and look, where this horse has been beaten enough times now to put the to put the uh, the uh, the sire, you know, the Coolmore Banner Spiel kind of to rest now. He's he's been beaten loads of times. But we shouldn't forget, last year his career best effort came on similar ground in this very race, over this course and distance, uh, in probably what was going to be a stronger race. Uh, he was very disappointing at Royal Ascot. I don't think that's a surprise. He's a big gross horse. Uh, he was very weak in the betting then when he went to the Coral Eclipse. And... Uh, and he still ran very well, and it just looked to me like he was gonna—he was just being brought along. And his day at Ascot against the Nabel was going to be their day that we saw the best of Japan. But obviously, he came out of that race with a with a stone bruise, I think, and he didn't run his race. So then, um, I think Aidan O'Brien said he, they left shoes off him for three weeks, and we don't know how much work Aidan got into him after he was sore from Ascot. So. Were we expecting a little bit too much for him to run up to his best in the Irish Champion Stakes? Don't get me wrong, he was a little disappointing in that race. But that even that level of him being disappointing, I still think puts him in the mix strongly 
with the likes of um, In Swoop, Mogul, all these horses, but yet he's doubled the price at 33 to 1. And look, I know there's people going to be screaming at the TV now saying, this fella hasn't got a clue. Japan's been beaten more times than you've had hot dinners, etc., etc., etc. But he's 33 to 1. You know, he's just... He's just too big a price for a horse who had his career best on similar ground in this race last year. I, I quite like that angle. He's off the graphic at the moment, 33 to 1 uh, uh, or thereabouts. If you shop around for a bit of Japan, and you, it's foolish to write off any Aidan O'Brien runner in a big race, as we know, even if they are very, very big prices. He, he won a derby with a very big priced horse again uh, this year. Uh, Simon, talking about the Irish Champion Stakes that Declan mentioned there, you were both pretty keen on Sotsas, um, who ran okay in the Irish Champion Stakes, but his trainer, Jean-Claude Rouget, really bullish in his comments this week about him. Where do you, are you still with Sotsas? Are you still a fan? Not quite as much as <laughs> I had been prior to Leopardstown, Sean. Uh, I was expecting a bit more, maybe not a win, certainly uh, performing slightly better than Sotsas did that day. He was under the cosh a fair way out and he stuck to his task. Um, but I, uh, the top sass we saw this time last year was a better horse than that for me, a bit better, not massively better. Um, he's won this year, um, but he hasn't quite attained the same peaks uh, for me as he did last year. I also think that a really testing mile and a half in the arc with a strongly run race uh, possibly exposes his stamina. He's every bit as good at 10 furlongs as at 12. Uh, he could he could make a place, but uh, he won't be carrying my money, even though he's a double figure price. OK. Andre Fab is a genius, as we know, Declan. He's, he's, he's put Persian King into the race. He, he admits he doesn't know whether he'll stay. He says, you know, it's in the lap of the gods, that. But uh, the horse is certainly good enough. Uh, right decision to run or not? <laughs> Absolutely not for me, and, and look, I'm, I'm probably going to look silly now if he goes and wins, but this horse, uh, for me, has got no chance of staying. I don't think I wouldn't have fancied him on, on decent ground in the arc. Um, I certainly don't fancy him on, on the prevailing ground that we're going to see. Um, look, he just, to me, this horse just looks on it. He just looks built like a miler now. Uh, he races like a miler. And, you know, I, I just, I cannot see it. He, if you go back and look at all his runs this season, he's been really on the bit. He's just, he, he just, he just looks like an out and out miner to me physically and on the form book. So look, they, they, they call him the, the French master for, for, um, for, you know, plenty of reason. His record in the arc is phenomenal. But uh, to me, this run just strikes of a, of a trainer who wants to have a run a runner in, in the big race at, uh, in France's greatest race. So, strong strong look, views there, Declan. Love can't win if she starts now, and uh, Andre Fab doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> we'll quote you on both of those. Uh, just staying on the French uh, topic, let's have a quick look at the Vermeil, which is the Phillies trial uh, for the race, mile and a half at uh, Paris Longchamp on Trials Day. Rabia was a red hot favourite this day. She came with a huge reputation, Simon. Tanawa beat her. Tanawa's definitely not going for the arc. Uh, we'll talk about um, the opera in our other programme, by the way. Well, you've got another big race preview uh, on the other. Uh, arc day races where you might see Tanawa but Rabia goes for the arc what, what did you make of her defeat Simon I thought it was a perfectly respectable effort it depends on what you're expecting of her beforehand and you may recall that I was not convinced she was uh, justifying her position as third favorite in the arc anti-post market at that point um, I think she'll improve on this she was given a fair bit to do but Tanawa ran the last 600 metres quicker than she did, just just about. And while I think Rabia will improve a bit and, again, may may get into the shake-up for a minor place, um, I I don't see her being good enough to beat an enable on form or, for that matter, even a love uh, on form. OK, OK. Now, it's selection time for our big race preview panel. Uh, we've mentioned lots of horses at big prices. Let's see, though, what the fellas go for in our final selection analysis. We'll start with you, Declan. Where, 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 what have you come down on? Uh, look, I, I think in the big races like this, uh, sometimes for me, I just, lo I just love backing a winner. Um, you know, whether Enable now is value in the market, that can be questionable. But I think if people want to back the winner of the arc, yeah, they back Enable. Uh, I have backed her. Um, but look, look, that's that's pretty obvious. I don't think the viewers, you know, 
they don't need me or anyone else to tell them that Enable's got a good chance. Um, I, how I'm also going to play the race is I'm going, going to have um, a little each way bet on Japan at 33s. Our friends at BetSafe are, are, I think, standout price about him. So get on with them. And the other way, I'm going to just have a win only bet on Japan um, in the without Able and Market. Okay. So that's how I'm going to. That's how I'm going to play the race. OK, so enable for Declan. Uh, but don't forget about Japan at big prices, including in the without market. Simon, well, how are we betting? I think Enable uh, should have been short price favourite for this all along. Um, and she's still value at the kind of price that she is now. Last year, the Tory, the sectionals underlined that the Tory went a bit too soon in an overly strongly run race. Uh, it's easy to ride the race in the stands, but uh, I don't anticipate the Tory getting it wrong this time. And I, I'm very hopeful that Enable will justify support and rewrite the history books. Yeah, well, she'll do exactly that if she goes and wins, of course. So two votes for Enable there. I favour love over Enable. But uh, from a betting point of view, Mogul and In Swoop were my horses going into the trials day. I backed In Swoop, I have to confess, not Mogul. And In Swoop finished second to Mogul. I like them both. Mogul's actually a bigger prize with many firms than In Swoop, which seems to me uh, slightly the wrong way round, given that Mogul finished in front of him last time. So I'd be with Mogul with a little saver on In Swoop as well. I can see them both running very, very big races. I think that trial is excellent. I still think love will beat Enable no matter what happens. So maybe a match bet on them. Talking of special... Uh, uh, prices, special bets. Um, we've got a, a special offer for you from BetSafe. Uh, if you want to be with Love and you like Batash in the Abbey, you can back them both at nine to one. That's the Love Batash uh, double. And if you like Batash and Enable, as the boys do, they certainly they, they like Enable. We'll find out about Batash in another show. And Earthlight, of course, has only been beaten once. Twenty-five to one for that treble. Maximum stake terms and conditions apply. Find all the details on BetSafe.com. Com. Just remains to thank Declan Ricks and Simon Rollins. Thanks very much, chaps, for your input. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, subscribe, hit subscribe. You get all the latest from uh, Sky Sports Racing and, of course, from our friends at, at the Races. All of that uh, uh, by hitting subscribe. And you can join in the conversation below the video as well. Love to hear your views and your fancies and your best bets. Thanks for watching our big race betting preview with Betsy.